Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, guys. This is Sharon from the House of Prayer. Are you going to heaven or hell? What you do will affect your eternity. This world we live in right now is not our permanent dwelling. As the Bible describes human beings as aliens, strangers, foreigners, sovereigners, or pilgrims in this world. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. A sovereign is a person who resides temporarily in a place who is simply passing through. The Bible compares mankind life to grass. He or she is here today and tomorrow will find him or her no more. Psalms 103 verse 15 and 16. As for man, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field. So he flourished, for the wind passeth over it. It's gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. To add to it that God knows exactly how many days we will live here on earth. Job chapter 14 verse 5. Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. Thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. What the verse tells us is that no one has the ability to extend his days here on earth. If this is true, if our days are truly numbered, this means that we all have an allocated limited amount of time on this earth. Have you ever sat down and thought of that before? That each second brings you closer and closer to an appointment. You may be a person who was always late for an appointment, but there is one appointment that you won't be late to. In fact, you can't be late to for this appointment. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27. And it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. So what follows after this appointment? Judgment. That means that before our eternity is affected by what we do here on earth, we therefore have power to shape and change our eternity while we are still breathing. Are you headed to hell or heaven? I believe we all know where we are headed. If you are heading to hell, I honestly believe that you know it. And if you are going to heaven, I also believe that you know. We all know deep down. What you do in this life will affect your eternity. Jesus Christ encountered two thieves who were crucified together with him. One thief questioned the identity of Jesus Christ. That if really he is the son of God, let him save himself together with him. Whilst the other thief makes a wise decision, he's remorseful. He uses his last chance in his last moments on earth to change his destiny. He therefore repents of his sins before Jesus Christ and immediately his destiny is altered. Jesus Christ pronounces to him that he will be with Jesus that day in paradise. And somewhere in heaven right now, he is sitting there having the time of his life. This is how our daily actions are affecting our eternity as everything we do here is a seed we are sowing. Something he did and literally his last second on the earth has shaped his eternity. He is not in hellfire by the skin of his teeth. In his last moments, he made it to heaven. Let me tell you that everything you do matters. 
If you pray, it matters. If you don't pray, it matters. If you commit that sin, it matters. If you don't commit that sin, it matters. Everything you do is sowing for eternity. Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 and 8. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. The devil and the world systems are so deceptive, so much so that it can engage someone in useless struggles of life that are not beneficial to him. People may find themselves gaining everything they need in this world and eventually losing their soul. Honestly, what is the point of driving the fastest cars, living in the biggest homes, only for you to be spending eternity in utter darkness? We shall realize that life after death is so much more important compared to life here on earth. So after we die, we come face to face with eternity. We come face to face with the choices we made here on earth. The choices we make here on earth will determine our eternity, our eternal destiny. Either eternity or he in heaven or eternity in hell. After someone steps into eternity, they have no power to change his destiny. Neither do those here on earth have the power to alter that person's destiny. What awaits him is judgment. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27. And as it is appointed for men to die once, but after this the judgment. To illustrate this fact, Jesus Christ had to narrate to his disciples the parable of Lazarus and the rich man. They were on a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores and laid at its gates, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So it was the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried, and being in torment in Hades, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his tongue in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented, tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Remember that in your lifetime you received your good things and likewise Lazarus evil thing but now he is comforted and you are tormented and besides all this between us and you there is a great gulf fixed so those who want to pass from here to you cannot no one can pass from there can pass to us and the rich man said, I beg you, therefore, Father, that you would send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Abraham said to him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if one goes to them from the dead, they will repent. But he said to him, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, 
neither will they be persuaded through one rise from the dead. I believe Jesus Christ gave this parable deliberately to give us a glimpse of what happens when one steps into eternity. That whatever mistakes someone did while here on earth can never be rectified. We who are living now have a good chance to change our destiny as much as we are living in the world we should know that we are not of this world. We have a place and a home that we are heading to. Therefore, we shall always have a heavenly perspective. We should always seek the things above since we have been raised with Jesus Christ. If then... We were raised with Christ. Seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things of earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Colossians 3 verses 1 through 3. This means that in whatever we do, we should aim to please him who enlist us as his soldiers. Never should we be found entangling ourselves in the things of this world. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. Second Timothy 2-4 and the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. 1 John 2.17 Therefore we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well-pleasing to him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the thing done and the body according to what he has done whether good or bad second corinthians chapter 5 verses 9 and 10 luke 18 verses 2 through 8 saying there was in a city a judge who feared not god neither regarded man and there was a widow in that city and she came unto him saying Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while. But after what he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because his widow troubled me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith. Shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him through he bear long with them? Jesus ended his parable with the following question. If an ungodly, wicked, and disrespectful judge eventually answers a pestering widow's plea for help, which he felt were terribly annoying, shall therefore not God answer his own children who cry to him day and night? The obvious answer to this question is, of course, God will. God bless each of you, and I love you.